Welcome to Uno Ball. Today we're here with Joe Caparoso from Badlands. You can go check out his podcast. I'll have all the links in the description. But today we're going to be talking about the New York Jets. As always, if you don't know ball and want to know ball, be sure to subscribe. Leave a like. Let us know in the comments what you think the Jets record will be this year. So, Joe, just to kind of start it off, we'll go kind of chronologically. Well, I guess it isn't chronological because we're going to talk about the draft first. Um, what was your favorite draft pick by the Jets and why? Uh, I mean, I was particularly excited about Malachi Corley. He was a guy that we had talked about a lot before uh, as a day two option and someone who would bring a skill set they've been looking for for a while to add to the receiver room, the ability to break tackles, run after the catch, uh, just from a style of play fits well with what I think they're trying to do from an offensive perspective. So to get him where they got him, I think was particularly exciting. I, I can't say Braylon Allen has won myself and many Jet fans over so far this OTA is probably because he looks like a Mandalorian out there when he has like his equipment on, like it's insane actually. Uh, but those two dates, th- those two day two guys, day three guys have been particularly exciting. Look, we all we all love the fashion no pick, but the skill position players uh, always always get you a little more excited. They're always more fun. And I will say, like, I think I was watching the Jets vlog where they were showing um, Douglas in the draft room and he was trying to trade up for Corley a couple times. Right. And just he couldn't find yeah. a partner. So they obviously really, really liked him. Yeah, I think it was a guy that they've had circled for a while. <laughs> the post-draft chatter is that Rodgers was very involved in this pick, signed off on the pick. Corley's hanging out with him in the offseason. They're like staying together. And I think he'll have a pretty quick impact just because they have yeah. the depth chart set up. There's going to be a lot of reps to be had there uh, behind Garrett Wilson and Mike Williams while Mike Williams gets up to speed. So with some of the quick release stuff, I think Rodgers will want to do. I think for you know a, a rookie where he was taken, he should have a pretty big immediate impact. Yeah, I, I do like Corley a lot. The only thing question I will say is probably the handwriting that I saw on yes, social media. The, the little... handwriting is definitely a red flag, but <laughs> look, he's here to score touchdowns, not write essays. Right, right. No, yeah, I, I think and I, I love Corley going to you guys, going to the Jets, because what I was worried about with Corley is like, you know, if he gets thrown into a situation where, and again, this this is contingent on Mike Williams staying healthy, obviously. But, you know, if Mike's healthy and Garrett's healthy, we don't have to worry much about Malachi not getting the majority of reps in the slot. I think that that's pretty crucial to his development right now. I think that's where he's going to be the best. Like you said, with Aaron Rodgers, you know, those little slot screens, quick stuff, he'll be perfect for that. So I think he was a perfect addition to you guys as, you know, the receiver room you guys have, because he wouldn't have fit everywhere, but he definitely did fit well in the Jets. That's for sure. Yeah, I, I think, like you said, a lot of quick release this year, things that are going to help protect Rodgers and make sure he's healthy for December, January uh, stretch run. Uh, they'll be used Brees Hall in the screen game. They'll do quick stuff to Garrett Wilson, but Corley, that, that's right in his wheelhouse. And there should be a pretty specific package of plays that maximize his value to this offense. Yeah, no, absolutely. So to move, uh, you know, from the draft to the off season, like like Hunter said, we we're not, not chronological, but kind of. But favorite move just in total of the off season, you know, dis- discluding the draft, obviously. Just favorite move you guys made the whole off season. I, I'd be hard pressed not to say getting Tyron Smith. I didn't think they'd be able to land that type of big ticket item in free agency. Of course, there's injury concerns, but when he's right. He's as good as it gets at left tackle. And for what the Jets are doing right now with this like weird short window with Rodgers at 40 years old, like that's the kind of guy you push the chips in for. And really, it's like a short-term deal. It's not going to make or break them in either way. If he gets hurt and he can only play eight games this year, it's not going to kill them long-term. So getting him with Morgan Moses, who they proactively went out and traded for, to totally revamp the tackle situation on top of drafting Fashionu, I just think was particularly exciting and, and needed after what we saw last year. I mean, you're, you're protecting an old quarterback. You have an electric running back who you want to give as much space as possible to. So I, you know, I thought it would be a classic, like he used the jets as leverage to get more money somewhere else. So the fact that they were able to get that over the line, I think was particularly encouraging and it will help them a ton on offense when he's out there. Oh, absolutely. And I think it's even more encouraging from the perspective of like, you know, he's coming off of one of the best years of his career. And and again, there was kind of that little stint, you know, a couple of years where it wasn't like he was playing bad football. It's just well, what we come to expect from Tyron Smith is just to be an elite all pro, you know, tackle every year. A little bit of a, you know, dwindling off there. But then last year, kind of like their rejuvenation season. And that's perfect for you guys, because now you have two vets, you know, looking for that ring, you know, getting into those last years of their career. You know, that's got to push them forward to put, you know, to play harder. And that's just the perfect situation, I think, for him and the Jets. It's good how they have it set up where you have these two veterans who can 
mentor and play ahead of Fashion, who was their first rounder, who'll be their long term left tackle. And even a guy like Carter Warren, who I think will be their long term right tackle, they have an ability to learn now behind two very proven veterans, which is particularly exciting. And then they have something similar on the defensive side of the ball with Hassan Reddick in front of Will McDonald, where, you know, McDonald will probably only play 30, 35% of the snaps this year, but he's going to get to learn from a guy in Reddick who, in a perfect world, he ends up being, I don't know, 75, 80% of what he is uh, at this stage of his career. So they have some of that stack at premium positions, which is nice to see. Something I feel like the Jets did very well this kind of offseason compared to last offseason. I don't know how Jets fans feel, but something, you know, looking looking in from the outside, what I struggled with the Jets last year is it feels like they pushed all their chips into everything just working perfectly. Like Rodgers went down, like Tyrod Taylor, great backup quarterback to sign this year, but that would have been better last year. It felt like they didn't have kind of backup plans on the offensive line last year where it's there was injuries, people were taking turns getting hurt, and you draft Olu to kind of supplement similar to what the Bengals did by drafting Amarius Mims and then signing Trent Brown. So I think what the Jets did this year, they like future-proofed with grabbing Olu and then also set themselves up for success that if those injuries do come on the O-line, they do have backups that they can count on. God forbid Rodgers goes down. You do have a quarterback that can put together a competent offense. Yeah, I mean, there's more of contingency plans in place this year. I think they learned their lessons from last year the hard way, unfortunately. And look, I don't know how many teams have been able to sustain the volume of injuries that they had last year, but they're better positioned to weather that storm uh, overall this season. There's just a lot more depth throughout the roster. It's not perfect. I'd like to see them do a little more at receiver and safety and interior mm-hmm. defensive line. But on paper, it's a team that in this version of the AFC East should really win 10 or 11 games unless something goes really wrong. Someone you know gets hurt, misses a ton of time. The coaching staff is just that bad where they can't overcome it. But on paper, it should be a 10 or 11 win team, I think. Gotcha. Yeah. So kind of to touch on that, do you think there are like legitimate concerns around the wide receiver depth? We know Mike Williams has had trouble staying healthy. Corley is a rookie and then Lazard has been kind of up and down. So is that something that going into the year they're really worried about? Do you think they could be a player for, I don't know. I don't know if they want to go out and get another, like, I don't know if it'd be worth it to go get like another older vet, but it's almost like if Garrett Wilson isn't there or Mike Williams goes down, it just gets pretty thin again. Yeah, I think they need another piece there because the coaching staff has been pretty clear that they're hoping Mike Williams is ready for week one. So you're not going to see a lot of Mike Williams in the summer or in the preseason. And it probably he probably won't be himself until, what, week seven, week eight. Corley, as you said, is young. Lazard could very well get leapfrogged by Jason Brownlee or Xavier Gibson, who will be second year players now who are, are fine, but you really want being you know, like your fourth and fifth receiver. Right. I think the jets, depending how the season starts are very much positioned to be trade deadline players for okay. a Devontae Adams, uh, Ayuk, if he's still on the market, Adams is the name that will continue to get linked to them. But if the jets are four and one and the Raiders are one and five, and the jets have two third round picks next year. They have their first, they have their second, they have enough ammo where they can go do a proactive move like that. I mean, Adams is obviously the top top of that market, right. but there'll be another disgruntled veteran at some point if they want to go big big game fishing, and they have the draft pick ammo to do that, and I think they will because it's a do-or-die season for the front office and coaching staff. No, and I feel like that that transitions perfectly in, you know, to what I wanted to ask you next, because you, you already kind of have answered it here. But like I was going to say, because there's kind t- of two in kind of like, like two of them that are similar. So I'll ask you this first one first. Like, what is just the current, you know, Jets fan like stance on Robert Sala? Like, you're, you're basically confirming to me he's on the hot seat still. And you guys need to make a deep run this year for him to get off of the hot seat, essentially. Right. Yeah, I think Sala in particular, if the Jets don't win at least nine games this year, he's gone. And even nine games could be borderline. You know, if you look at his record through three years, it's in pretty awful historical territory. I think he's been very good with retooling the defense. I think there's some positive things he does as a player coach and recruiting, but he's got to win. It's his fourth year and the Jets have been really bad all three years he's been here. Joe Douglas, similar boat, but probably has a touch more job security. You know, he's been here longer. His record is also horrific over that entire time frame. I would say he's done, considering their circumstances, done the best he could with the situation this offseason. And he is more senior in the org and gets a little less heat from the fan base. So 
I could definitely see a scenario of the Jets go like eight, nine, where they fire Salah and Douglas gets to hire one more coach. And then if it doesn't work, he'd be out after a year or two. If it goes real south, I think they'd clear both of them out and start fresh. Yeah, that's almost what it starts to feel like from, you know, like the outside looking in. But to your point, yeah, Douglas definitely does have that extra security. I just know because it's to the point now where it's kind of like my other question, but you've already basically answered it. Like, but looking at this year, it's kind of like Super Bowl or bust for Jets fans, right? Because the way that your window is set up, yes, you guys have really a, a lot of good young talent. But, you know, we all know you need that quarterback in place. And it's not like in a perfect world if Jordan Travis is that future guy. It's not like he's going to necessarily make that jump to being in Aaron Rodgers territory as you know as quickly as necessary. So is it basically this year and, and maybe next year as well? It's kind of like Super Bowl or bust from your perspective? Uh, I mean, look, that's always, that's always the main goal. But you're talking to a fan base that hasn't made the playoffs in 13 years. It's the yeah. longest playoff drought in the big four professional sports. It's been since 2010, which is just almost incomprehensible in today's NFL and even today's sports landscape. So this is, if the Jets make the playoffs and host a home playoff game, that will be considered that much more of a bigger success than it may, may for a different type of team, like the, you know, the chiefs or the Patriots a few years ago before they were in their rebuild. Like, uh, it's hard for me to say that if the Jets don't win the Super Bowl this year, it's an unmitigated disaster. If they win the AFC East and they win a playoff game and break the drought, get to have their first home playoff game since 2002, that's going to feel like a successful year. Now, that would then certainly mean like next year, if you don't win at all, that window is probably over. And the goal in getting Rodgers is like, yeah, you have a chance to win a Super Bowl. Get into the tournament. On any given day, you could have the best quarterback on the field. Maybe some injuries break your way. And before you know it, you win a Super Bowl. But I think they need to start by winning the AFC East. I think they're good enough to win the AFC East. I think Buffalo is probably taking a half step back. Miami's fine. I don't think they've gotten that much better or any better this offseason. New England's rebuilding. You know, go win 11 games, win the AFC East, host a playoff game, break the playoff drought, and, and take it from there. Yeah. Level-headed and just steps in the right direction. I, you know, it's a good way to look at it. It definitely is the right way to look at it. Yeah. Yes. yeah. As a Bears fan, we haven't had a playoff win since like 2011 so i feel you a little bit there it's definitely a tough watch year in and year out but kind of you touched on a little bit earlier with braylon allen with kind of this influx of backs through the draft do you think that they are trying to really solidify a kind of running back by committee less committee and obviously you're going to lean more Brees hall but more that you're trying to establish multiple backs in the backfield or is that more for insurance if Brees gets injured I think it's both. I think they're going to be a little more run heavy than people expect. I think people see Aaron Rodgers and they think they're going to throw 50 times a game. I don't think that's the case. I think they're going to try to, especially in certain matchups, lean very heavily on the run game and protect Rodgers so he is healthy for the stretch run. And with Brees, like, yeah, now he's a couple of years removed from the serious injury. He was still very good last year. But now you have another guy with Allen and maybe Isaiah Davis who can throw a combined 11, 12 carries a game to lighten that load on Brees Hall and not put too much on him. But I think there's going to be weeks where you see the Jets run the ball like 34, 35 times. Yeah. I think a lot of these guys come from the Niners tree, and the Niners love running the football and love playing great defense, and then they'll throw for big plays when they have a chance to. And even though the Jets have Rodgers, and there'll be certain times it's all on Rodgers, Brees Hall is going to be the focal point of this offense, I think, overall, and has a chance to be, I think, the most productive offensive player in the NFL this year, inclusive of Christian McCaffrey, if everything goes right. And having a good, reliable backup for him, or potentially two reliable backups, they drafted three running backs in the past two years in the middle rounds, uh, is not a bad thing. Yeah, and I think, Dobbs, I'm just going to double up here because it kind of goes hand in hand. With the, you talk about them running the ball so much, I think that goes to say, like, they've upgraded the line extensively. So, do you think, when you look at the offense this year, that Jets fans are going to see a very big noticeable difference in the O-line play, which in turn allows for a different type of offense ran where it's a little bit more run heavy? Do you think because of those upgrades that they're going to lean more on the run like you were saying? I think so. I mean, I think they went out, replaced Lakin Tomlinson with John Simpson as a more physical player, will probably be better in the run game overall. They'll have AVT back. They'll have Joe Tipman in his second year. And then you know what you're getting with Moses and Tyron Smith. And I, I think with the backs they have and the space that Rodgers will help create with Garrett Wilson out there, I think there's going to be a lot of weeks they're going to be able to just overpower teams and run the football and play good defense and win. There's going to be certain times they're going to have to throw to win. But 
there's no reason Brees can't be a 1,300, 1,400 yard back running the football with Allen chipping in a meaningful amount behind him. Yeah. No, yeah, and and definitely a solid amount of receiving guards on top of that, which to your point, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe just maybe, I got to throw down a little prop here on Brees to take home offensive player of the year. You might have sold me on this one. Um, but to move over to the defensive side of the ball here, because, you know, there's definitely, you guys made some upgrades in the defensive side, albeit it was already a fantastic defense. How much of an impact do you see Hassan Reddick having this year? Not, not, not just in terms of stats, but also how we can, like we already touched on, kind of affect, you know, those young guys you have in the rotation as well. Well, pending they get this contract squared away, which I'm sure they will, it will probably just drag for a few weeks. Uh, a big, a big impact, right? They, he's a guy who's going to get you 11 to 13 sacks every year, no matter what. So to have that, to help free up Quinton Williams, to help free up Jermaine Johnson, who made a really nice leap in year two last year, to allow them to keep Will McDonald in more of a situational third down pass rusher, there's a good trickle down effect there overall, and. Their front seven is just a lot to deal with. I mean, to have to deal with Quinn and Williams, Hassan Reddick, and Jermaine Johnson all at once is is something. And behind them, you have probably the best trio of cornerbacks in the NFL with Sauce, DJ Reed, and Michael Carter in the slot. And you have Quincy Williams. And you have CJ Mosley still in the middle. So it's, uh, it's a good combination across the board on the defense. And there's no reason to think that they still won't be one of the better ones in football overall. Absolutely. And also, you know, Sherwood, we could throw Sherwood in there. Like you guys have, like to your point, you guys have such a fantastic, you know, just, just your personnel groups all across the defense are in such good shape. You know, it's kind of like, that's why we, you know, the expectations are so high for the Jets. And, you know, Wien Hunter last year, you know, going to the season, no, no shame in admitting it. Cause that's how you guys are built. You know, that's who we had picked. I don't know if you remember this Hunter, but we were doing our show for the, you know, Super Bowl predictions last year. Oh, yeah, we got a little yeah. ahead of ourselves knowing the Jets history with the wow. playoffs recently, but we did, we took you with the Jets were who we both landed on. Cause it was kind of like, you know, you look at this defense and you look, and again, it was the offense before the injuries, but on paper, I mean, there's no doubt like the Jets, the Jets are right there with absolutely anybody. And to add to that, I'm going to double down to here too, because yeah, this question goes perfectly hand in hand, you know, getting Chuck Clark back from the season ending injury before he got even able to take any real reps in the Jets uniform. I know it hurt for you guys, but now it'll be, you know, just a welcome sight to see him back this year. What are the expectations for Chuck Clark this year and how much of an impact do you think he's going to have on the DBs? I mean, look, he's the most proven safety on the roster at this point. I would argue I'd feel better if they added a veteran safety, Quandre Diggs, Justin Simmons, Marcus May, someone with a little experience back there. Because right now it's Clark coming off a serious injury, who's a nice, versatile piece who will fit well in this defense. Tony Adams, who struggled a bit in his rookie year as a starter, not his actual overall rookie year. And then they brought back Ashton Davis, who's more of a situational player. So they're pretty thin at safety. They, they really need another player there. I mean, Clark... They need him to be very good. And an upgrade over Jordan Whitehead, it was a disappointment the last couple of years for them. So it's great to get him back because without him, it's a very barren depth chart in safety. Yeah, I, yeah, think, I would agree with that as well. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting because I think the Jets were like the highest graded defense according to PFF last year. And then I believe they were fourth least scored against or something like that. But then they're one of the least scoring teams. So... As well as 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 long as the offense gets on tracks and at least plays average football, the Jets should be a very very dominant team. Especially, and I agree with what you said about the AFC East. Patriots aren't a problem. I don't think Miami got better in a AFC that you have to really put your chips in if you want to compete. And the Bills, I think they're kind of going to be in a down year. So obviously, we talked about possibly winning a division. What do you think is the ceiling and the floor for the Jets? I mean, the ceiling is probably like a 12 and five AFC East title, AFC championship game against the Chiefs, and you hope everything goes right. And there yeah. you go. I don't want to get any further than that. The floor, it's Rodgers getting hurt again and a repeat of what happened last year. I mean, maybe it's not the same flavor of it because uh, you won't have Zach Wilson. You'll have Tyrod Taylor, but also Tyrod could be a little injury prone as well. Yeah. I just think if he gets hurt again, like really hurt again, it's just going to be so devastating i don't know how they get themselves off the mat there and i think that's when you have a six and eleven and everyone's fired and they just start fresh so the reality is most people if you ask me now i'm like yeah they're probably going to win 10 or 11 games and they have a good chance to win the afc's i think they're definitely a playoff team if they're healthy and there's some upside there uh again Brees is the guy i'm most bullish on I, I do think he is like a good dart throw for like offensive he'll be that running back this year that people are like should he be in the MVP conversation? Is he just offensive rookie of the year? Because they'll use him a lot in the passing game, like the way they did down the stretch last year. And, you know, he did all that last year with Zach Wilson and a really bad offensive line. Now he's going to have Rodgers. Now he's going to have a good offensive line. 
He's also healthy, healthier than he was last year. So that that's where I'm the most bullish. And if he is that good, then yeah, maybe this is a 12 win team. So I, I know probably the general consensus on this, and I know why they hired him because of Aaron Rodgers. But last year when Rodgers was out and it was Hackett calling the plays, like how how tough was that to watch knowing that you have Zach Wilson, who obviously was a high round pick. And I, I don't want to like harp on the the past, but I'm just interested to see kind of from an inside the Jet, Jets fandom, how they feel about it. Like you have a quarterback that was supposed to redshirt that hopefully can be the guy after Rodgers leaves. And then you have, I mean, we saw his time in Denver. It was rough. Like, how was that knowing that like this guy that you were really high? I don't know if you were high on him, but just kind of got failed along the way, especially a year where he was supposed to kind of recoup. It's just happy it's over. I mean, it really yeah. ended the night he got pulled for Chris Trevler in a Thursday night game the year before <laughs> yeah. when they yeah. were supposed to like, it was a win and in, not win and in, but it was like a must win for a playoff game. Yeah. Home Thursday night game. And he gets pulled at home for a guy who's effectively a fullback. And it was over then. And the fact that we had to go through like this, like extended other version yeah. of it was too much. And it, it was the relationships done and over on both sides. I'm glad it's in the past. I, I, I'm not rooting for this, but I think I, I just think that's it for Zach Wilson. Like, I don't yeah. think he's going to make any noise in Denver. I think from what I've seen, he's struggling in minicamp. He's the third or fourth quarterback in the depth chart. Like, he's not like he's not going to be Geno Smith and then like five years be starting effectively somewhere else. He's not even going to be Sam Darnold, where Darnold's like turned into like an OK backup. Like, I, I don't I think Zach Wilson will probably be out of football within like two or three years. OK. Well, with how the tenure went with you guys, you know, who could blame you for saying that? I mean, it, it was an atrocious tenure, and especially with how high the capital you guys spent on him, you know. And I'm not afraid to admit, you know, I go back. At the time, I was a Zach Wilson truther. But as a matter of fact, and as I always tell everybody, like, it's, it was really is true. Zach Wilson was kind of the guy that made me really start to reevaluate how I evaluate quarterbacks. You know, less big play, less splash fun stuff, more just consistent footwork, consistent, you know. So that really, if anything, Zach Wilson was a lesson for me. And um, I think, you know, going forward, like you said, just now you guys don't have to deal with them. It's on to a better era. You know, for for a question here that's more personable and because you know, maybe have to think about this one because there's a lot of, you know, avenues you could go with this one. What's just your favorite Jets fan memory you have across, you know, your whole life here? Because you have a lot you could choose from. I was at their home, their last, well, no, one of their last home playoff wins, which was in 1998. I was 11 years old. They beat the Jaguars at home in the divisional round of the playoffs. Keyshawn Johnson had a receiving touchdown, a rushing touchdown, an interception, and recovered a fumble. Uh, and they just kind of like kicked the crap out of like the Mark Brunel Jaguars back in the day. <laughs> uh, they Unfortunately, they were up 10 nothing against Denver in the AFC Championship game and, and lost. They should have went to the Super Bowl that year. But being at a home playoff win in the divisional round, that's yet to be topped. I was also there in the last game at Giant Stadium when they beat the Bengals and clinched the playoffs with Rex Ryan, uh, which was a cool moment and a cool game so th those two always come top of mind to me yeah um i'm trying to remember i you guys had thomas jones for a little bit right was Did, he i can't remember because i was really i was pretty young with that was he pretty um was he dominant on the or not dominant? he, had, but he was effective he had a couple really good years for the jets yeah. far year in 2008 and in 2009 when they went to the afc championship game uh he was the main engine on the offense eventually sean green kind of like took some of his role yeah. But Jones, I think he had like a 1,400 yard season in there for the Jets. And Jet fans think of him like fondly. He was, but he was with the team 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, and or 2009. I think that was it. But was very effective in all those years. The only reason I bring that up is because I was like heartbroken when he left the Bears. It was so tough yeah. to watch. He was one of my it's favorite a good trade players. for us at the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Thank you so much, Joe. I appreciate it so much. Do you want to let people know where they can find you? Uh, yeah, Badlands is available on Patreon at patreon.com backslash Badlands TOJ. Uh, you can check there. We got daily podcasts, videos, film breakdowns, all that good stuff on the Jets and the NFL. Uh, Badlands, it's patreon.com backslash Badlands TOJ. Awesome. Well, I'll have that in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you don't know ball, want to know ball, be sure to subscribe, leave a like, let us know in the comments what you think the Jets record will be this year. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much for watching.